Hey Grace, how are you doing? It's been a long time since we last spoke. I was just wondering if you were well. Dave? Yeah, it really has been a long time. I'm fine. I'm doing much better without you. So what do you want? You've got a lot of nerve talking to me after everything you did. It's already been months since you left and you suddenly want to have a chat? Just to let you know, I'm not interested in catching up or making up with you. I just want to know how you've been recently, that's all. You don't have to be so defensive. You must be feeling lonely living by yourself in that house without me, right? You can't have completely forgotten about me already. Lonely? <laughs> that's a great joke. I stopped feeling lonely three seconds after you walked out the door. Honestly, I felt more angry and sad, but it's already been months. I'm not sad about you anymore. I'm disappointed and still angry enough to not want to have anything to do with you, but otherwise, I'm doing really well. I'm grateful to our lawyers that our divorce went so smoothly and that it was all over so quickly. Thanks to that, I didn't have to meet you in court as often as I expected. All right, I'm kind of shocked. I thought that you would still feel something for me. I mean, it's only been six months, you know? You can't have gotten over me that quickly, can you? I kind of feel like we've really grown apart. I feel like there's a massive distance between us now. We used to be husband and wife, and we were in love, and we lived together and ate dinner together. But look at us now, we're so far apart. Huh? What's your point, Dave? I told you that I'm not interested in talking to you. That includes getting nostalgic about how things used to be. And what do you expect? I don't know where you're living right now, but of course we're far apart, physically and emotionally. We are divorced, and we're never going to see each other ever again. We're complete strangers now. You're no different to any stranger I pass on the street. The difference between you and a stranger is that I would rather have a conversation with any random person rather than speak with you. Grace, don't be so cold. You don't have to be so harsh towards me. I used to be your husband. The key words are, used to be. That was until you won the lottery and suddenly started acting like you were better than me. Yeah, it was a lot of money, but I don't understand how you could have changed so much in just a matter of hours. You threw me away on the day you won that lottery and you're telling me that I'm being cold? I don't have anything to say and I have no intention of being kind to an idiot like you. Trust me, I feel really bad for what I did. I know I've been an idiot. That's why I messaged you today. I did something terrible, but I wish you could just talk to me. I'm really sorry. I hurt your feelings. I thought about what I did since then, and I've reflected on my actions. I regret ever doing something so stupid and impulsive. And I should have been more rational. We were talking about the winnings and shouldn't have reacted like that. No, I should have listened to what you said more carefully. You were being so reasonable about what to do with the money and I wrecked our marriage because I was so selfish. I regret all of that and more. The fact that you're seeing that now means you're in this situation I predicted you'd end up in all those months ago, right? I hate to rub it in, but I told you so. I can't believe it took you so long to realize how wrong you were. I could see it coming from a mile away, but I guess you just had to experience it firsthand. I know I was stupid and I'm sorry. I finally realized that you warned me that this would happen for my sake. I was too blinded by the money to understand that you're only thinking of me. I wish I could go back in time and change everything, but I can't. I was so stupid, and I regret it all. Yeah, you are so stupid and horrible too. I get that winning $3 million was a big deal. It's a lot of money, and it's not every day that such a large amount of money comes into hand. I think anyone would panic and get big ideas about how they want to spend their newfound fortune. I was pretty shocked too, and I won't lie, I thought about all the amazing things we could buy too. But the way you reacted was abnormal. Once you knew you had the winning ticket, nothing else mattered to you. You only cared about yourself and the money. I wasn't thinking straight. It was like in a dream state, and I couldn't help myself. All I suggested was that we should be sensible with how we spend the money, and save as much of it as possible for our future together. And keep some money aside in case we had children. I wasn't planning on taking anything from you, and I made no mention of spending it all by myself, but you just started raving, shouting at me that it was your money and that I wasn't allowed to touch a single cent, that it was for you to use the way you wanted to spend it. 
I never intended to take anything from you, but that's what you assumed and suddenly, poof, like magic, you were gone along with the money. You didn't even answer my messages until you sent me the divorce papers. And then you only replied that you would give me alimony if I signed the papers. We had been together for three years, but all that went down the drain when you got that money and turned into a completely different man. For weeks, I wondered what those three years were, as if they meant nothing to you. After I stopped being sad, I realized that I had already wasted three years and that I shouldn't waste any more time trying to make sense of what you did. I know. I was completely at fault. But it was three million dollars. Neither of us had even had a tenth of that amount in our banks at one time. You can imagine why I went so crazy, can't you? Yeah, it's a lot of money, but that doesn't excuse your behavior. You ranted at me that my parents might come and beg you for money because they're so poor and that you couldn't trust anyone anymore. You were insulting me and my family with every word you said. Because you had all this money, you had this ridiculous idea that you were better than all of us. I never knew you could be so hurtful and obnoxious, and I was shocked that you could change so easily because of some money. Well, I didn't mean it. You know that, don't you? I regret everything I didn't say after that. I wish I could take it all back. Really? It sounded like you meant it at the time. Don't try and run away from what you did. It's way too late for you to start begging me for forgiveness. I couldn't care any less about how guilty you feel. Your feeling bad isn't going to change anything. Anyway, what do you want? Let's get this over with. What are you talking about? There's a reason why you messaged me today, isn't there? I know you didn't just message me so that you could apologize. No, I really was worried about you. I wanted to show you that I changed and felt bad about what I did. I guess I also wanted to find out what you did with the money I gave you when we divorced. I was just curious about how you spent it. That's all. Money? That's what you're interested in. You're talking about the lump sum of money you gave me, right? You chose to give me that money instead of sending me regular payments of alimony because you didn't want to risk having to send me alimony payments for the rest of your life, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that money. I gave you $200,000, didn't I? Yeah, you did. What about it? What did you do with it? It's my money, so what does it matter what I did with it? I don't think it's any of your business how I spent it. It's not like you set any conditions for how I spend it when the amount was decided in court. Yeah, but it was my money to begin with, and I think I have a right to know what you've done with it, and decide what you do with it regardless of what was decided in court. And if you have any left, I was wondering if you could return it. Since you're so smart when it comes to money, I was hoping there's a lot left. No way! You can't seriously be asking for it back. It may have been yours when you had it, but it became mine when you paid it to me as compensation. Do you understand the meaning of the word compensate? You're the one that suddenly asked for a divorce, so I was owed alimony. But you didn't want to pay that, and I didn't want to keep on having to meet you in court, so I settled for that money you gave me. I don't have any obligation to return that money to you. That money was owed me, and it's mine. Yeah, it was compensation. But I only gave you a lot of money because I had a lot of money of my own at the time. But I'm having trouble right now, and I need some money. It would be great if you could give it back. To be honest, it's my money, so I shouldn't even have to ask you. What do you mean by trouble? I got married after we divorced. Oh, so the rumors I heard were true. Congratulations, I heard that you married someone. So how did that turn out for you? She ran away with all my money. I never should have married her. What? All of it? Yeah, can you believe it? It was three million dollars, so I thought that I didn't have to worry about any of that for the rest of my life. And I thought I could live like a celebrity. So I resigned from my job and had a house built for me and my new wife. We filled it with designer furniture and everything. We even had a bowl put in. We were living the perfect life together until one day she suddenly asked for a divorce. After the divorce was finalized, I realized that all my money had been transferred to her bank account and she was gone. We were divorced, my account was empty, and she had disappeared. She even told her lawyers that I've been cheating on her, even though I've never done anything like that. I'd already lost one million in compensation during the divorce for an affair I never had, and she took the rest of what was in my account without me even realizing it. I don't know where she is, but the last I heard, she was living in a penthouse apartment abroad. 
You said you never cheated on her, but she managed to win the court case. That must have meant that she had enough evidence to argue for compensation. You can try to act a victim all you like, but in the end, it was your own fault. Your own irresponsible actions brought all this upon you. Yeah, fine. She got pictures of me with another woman, but how is this fair that she gets my one million in the divorce? It's my money! So you did cheat on her after all. You're a pathetic excuse for a husband. Yeah, alright. Say all you like. Anyway, that's not my point. I've explained why I need the money. Can you give me back the money I gave you? I need it right now. My ex-wife got the house and the divorce too, so I don't have anywhere to live. She's not even using it. She's abroad. But the woman bought it out for sale. I was kicked out of my own house so that she could sell it and take more money from me. Grace, you're still living at the same place we lived in when we were married, right? Can we live together again? Excuse me? Are you asking if you can move in with me? Let's just forget about everything that happened in the past and live together. I want us to start over. I'll be a better husband this time. Even if we don't have three million dollars, I know we can be happy together. I still love you. We can work through this together. I swear, I'll make you happy this time. No way! You must be out of your mind. It's disgusting how you think that you can slither your way back into my life again. We are over and we are never getting back together. Ever! The divorce was finalized and I'm free of you. I don't have anything else to say to you. Plus, I've already moved out of that house and sold it. I'm living somewhere else. What? You moved out? Where are you living now? Are you still close by? I'm not giving you the details of where, but I'll tell you a little about it. Thanks to the compensation I got from you, I was able to buy some pretty reasonable shares. I had to be patient, but it went really well. I managed to earn a profit from it. You bought shares? I never knew that you knew how to do that kind of stuff. Why didn't you tell me when I had 3 million? We could have made an even bigger fortune. Don't be stupid, Dave. It was beginner's luck. And of course, I didn't put the entire 20,000 you gave me into buying shares. I invested a reasonable amount and got lucky. Once I made a decent profit, I backed out and put all the money I made into a savings account. Right now, I'm working full time and using the money I saved up to live a little more luxuriously. I buy organic and I spend money on the things I love and enjoy, but I still have money saved for a rainy day. Thanks to that, I was able to get a penthouse apartment in a really lovely area. It's not filled with designer furniture, so it might not be as fancy as the place you had, but it's home. I realized early on that it was dangerous to impulse buy when you have so much money at your fingertips, so I try to only buy what I need or really want. I'm doing really well at work too, so everything is going perfectly, smooth sailing. I was being serious when I said I was doing better without you. Honestly, I'm grateful that you won that lottery, and I'm glad you told me you wanted a divorce when you did. If you hadn't, I would have been stuck with you. You're living in a penthouse apartment too? You're kidding. I never imagined that you would end up being so successful. It's only been six months since we divorced. But that's my money you're standing on. You and my other exes, you're both living in luxury thanks to me. It's money we were owed. I didn't know what to say about that money she took from your account, except maybe that it was just karma coming around to bite you in the ass. By the way, how much money do you have saved right now? About $200? You can't be serious. You're turning 36 this year, aren't you? You don't have a place to live, you're unemployed, and you only have $200 saved? I would sympathize, but I know that it's all your own fault. What are you planning to do from now on? I was just kicked out of my own house last week. I haven't been able to find a job yet. I thought that I could sell the house, but my other ex got it in the divorce, so I don't have anything worth selling. I already failed one job interview, and I didn't know what else to do, so I decided to message you hoping that you could help me. What about your parents? Why don't you ask them to let you stay with them while you find a place of your own and a job? Some idiots in my parents' neighborhood found out that I won 3 million and started harassing my parents. Most of it was really childish, you know? Throwing toilet paper around, but they were getting death threats in the mail and stuff too. Some magazines are asking for interviews non-stop. My parents ended up moving away when they cut ties with me. I need your help, Grace. I don't have anyone else. You're the idiot, Dave. That's the main reason why I warned you about bragging about your win to everyone. Just because you won 3 million doesn't make you better than everyone else. I told you that you shouldn't get carried away, didn't I? 
But you didn't listen, and you lost a lot of friends and made a lot of enemies in the process. I know. I regret a lot of what I did. I regret not listening to you the most, because none of this would have happened if I just did as you said. That's why I want to get back together again. I need you to keep me in check. Sorry, Dave, but I'm not interested in being your babysitter. We're never getting back together. There's not even a 1% chance of it happening. Why not? I'm not asking you to be my babysitter. I want us to be husband and wife again. We didn't get divorced because we stopped loving each other. You still love me, don't you? We can get back together again. You must be joking. You're the only one that thinks we still have a chance. I don't know whether you actually still have any feelings for me, or if you're just saying all this because you want money. But either way, it doesn't change how I feel about you. The second you said you wanted a divorce, I hated you from the bottom of my heart. You chose your money over me. You made that really clear during the divorce. Now I'm indifferent. I couldn't care less about what happens to you. Don't say that. That hurts more than being told you hate me. Please, I'm begging you for help. Could you at least have some pity for me? I need your help. We used to be married, remember? We spent three years living in the same house. We can forget about everything and start new things together. No thanks. You're the one that asked for a divorce despite three years we spent together, so don't bring it up as a reason to get back together. Then could you at least lend me some money? That's all I ask for. You said you've got money saved up. You can spare some, can't you? You made that money because of the money I gave you. You owe me. Come on, I don't even have a place to live. I'm begging you, Grace. Help me out. I don't have anyone else to turn to. I don't have any obligation to help you. You won $3 million and you told me that you didn't trust me with your money, saying that I might waste all of it on shopping sprees. Only God knows where you got the idea that I would do that. You said you wanted to spend it how you liked and demanded I sign the divorce papers. And you left, taking all of your money with you. Well, I'm telling you now that I'm free to spend the money that I have however I like, including the money I got as compensation. I don't have a single cent to give you. Then what am I supposed to do? The reason why you have so much money right now is because of the money I gave you. Don't you feel any gratitude towards me? You could at least give me something as a thanks. It's not fair that you're living in a penthouse apartment and have money saved and still have a job. I don't have anything. How can I accept that? Why should I care whether you accept it or not? You were living in a house filled with designer items and lived the celebrity life for a few months, didn't you? I hear that your new wife was quite beautiful too. You didn't have to work and spent your days relaxing, sleeping, and eating, I guess. Do you remember what you told me when you left me? You said that you were rich and that you deserved better than a boring old woman like me, even though we're the same age. Even though you would be just as boring without that money. You said that you were going to find someone younger and prettier, someone that would suit your newfound fortune. Did you think I would forget that you said that? I don't remember saying anything like that at all. But I am sorry, I really am. I wasn't myself then. I didn't think that at all. I've never thought anything like that. You didn't think I was being serious, did you? Ever since we got divorced, I've been thinking about you. I just want to get back together. I realized after spending a few months living with my other wife that the only one for me was you. I need you, Grace. Really? Do you need me? Thanks, I'm so flattered. Is that all you have to say? I'm begging you here. Just listen to what I have to say, please. Can't you be a little interested just for a minute? I just need a thousand dollars, that's all. I won't ask you for any more than that. I'll pay you back. Grace, are you listening to me? If I have a thousand dollars, I can buy lottery tickets again. I'll win a fortune and I'll be able to give you all the money you want. You've got to be kidding. I guess it's true that money drives people crazy. You hear a lot in the news about how people spend their winnings on something ridiculous, but I think you've outdone all of them. I've never heard of anyone that had to beg their ex for money to bet their chances on a second win. If you think that's the way out of your problems, then there's no helping you. What do you mean there's no helping me? You can help me! I just need money! We can fix everything if we get back together and help each other through this. I want to start over with you. I love you. Don't you love me back? Don't you feel sorry for me? You don't love me. You just love that I have something you don't. My money. And I don't need anything to be fixed. 
My life is as great as it is now. It's not perfect yet, but you're not the one that will make it perfect. You need to learn to fix your behavior and fix your problems yourself. Don't bother me anymore. I do love you. I only have you. Give me back my money. It's not yours. I made this money because of the decisions I made. You lost yours because of the decisions you didn't think through. Don't ever message or call me ever again. You asshole. Let me give you the same parting gift you gave me. I deserve better than a boring old man like you. I'm going to find someone that loves me and live happily ever after without you. I'll be blocking your number, so don't try to contact me. Goodbye. After that, I blocked Dave's number and blocked him on all the social networking they were connected on. Later on, I was able to forget about Dave pretty easily and was enjoying my peaceful life without him. I was living my ideal life, focusing on my career and coming home to the apartment I had taken care to furnish with the things I loved. Dave, however, had used up what remained of his savings and still couldn't pass an interview because of his obvious lack of work ethic. He didn't change his attitude and blamed the interviewers for not passing him as a result. He started borrowing money from loan sharks and with that money, he began gambling at his nearest casino. Of course, it wasn't that easy to make a fortune and the gambling only made his debt bigger and bigger. He was digging his own grave, but he still didn't change his attitude after realizing how big his debt had gotten. He became desperate, but instead of trying for another job interview, he tried to steal money from a convenience store and was caught by the police. I found out about Dave's arrest on the morning news, but was too indifferent to care. I only remarked that money really does drive people crazy and went on about my day as I usually would. All in all, Dave was just another stranger to me now. Screw him!